This had to be the most important series of the Red Sox 2024 season so far, right? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. The Red Sox had two choices coming into this homestand. Play the two best teams in Major League Baseball and really let this season get out of hand quickly or rise to the occasion and hopefully turn this season around. Well, the Red Sox decided to choose the latter because not only this weekend did they take it to the New York Yankees, winning two out of three games against the best team in the AL. They also beat the best team in the NL on this homestand as well. Officially, for the first time in a little bit, coming out of a homestand, two games above 500 now at 37 and 35 on the year 12 games out of first place for whatever that matters and now three games back of a wild card spot they actually lost a game during this homestand and that's mostly because the twins are on a five game winning streak but to be honest with you that doesn't really matter all that much this series was still absolutely critical for the Boston Red Sox so what we are going to do in today's video is we're going to break this series down talk about all the good that occurred talk about some of the bad as well and and we're going to talk about why it was so important that the Red Sox won this series and this homestand. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. I mean, I think we just absolutely have to start by talking about the offense in this series because after getting shut down in game one of scoring just one run, they came back in a massive way, scoring 17 total runs in the next two games on 26 hits. And on top of that, just for fun, they threw in nine stolen bases in the finale of this series, which gives them a franchise record. They absolutely showed up against the New York Yankees. Individually, there were a lot of really great performances. Jared Ran went off once again, five hits in this series, at least one in every game, scored three different times, swiped two bags in the finale, added another double to his total, threw in an RBI in there just to say he had one. I mean, Durant at this point is an all-star. If you're not voting five times a day for Jaron Duran to end up in Texas in a month or so, I don't know what you're doing at this point. He absolutely deserves to be there. Vote Jaron Duran for this year's all-star game. Say Don Rafaela being a Yankees killer is absolutely something I can get behind. He had seven total hits, including two back-to-back -back three hit games with two RBIs and a double as well. That average is slowly creeping up there now, firmly over 200 at 238. He hit 500 on this homestand as a whole with a 1.113 OPS. He's really starting to come into his own at the plate here, and hopefully this is a sign that things are really starting to turn around for him. Rafael Devers had four RBIs in this series as well, had a big moment in the final game with an RBI single that put the Red Sox ahead. Again, like Duran, looking at Rafi, he's having a career year OPS-wise at the plate. Another guy you should be voting for for this year's All-Star game. Connor Wong had one of the biggest hits in this entire series with a massive RBI triple to put the finale on ice. Quietly, Wong is putting together an All-Star season as well. He only struck out once in this entire series and had four RBIs. He is one of the best offensive catchers in Major League Baseball right now. What he's been doing at the plate has been wildly impressive. David Hamilton, maybe not the most productive series overall, but we have to include him in here because in the finale, he had a ridiculous four stolen bases on the Yankees, Jose Trevino, and scored three runs. Him and Duran at the top of this lineup, very quickly becoming one of my favorite parts of this team. I could go on and on about the Red Sox offense in this one. There were big moments offensively across the board for the Red Sox in this series, but I don't want to make this video two hours long for your sake. We talked about this so many times throughout this season. The Red Sox needed to be more consistent offensively, and they absolutely crushed it in this series. They've really absolutely crushed it over this homestand. Once again, they went up against three really solid pitchers in this series. One of them was able to shut you down, but they really impressed me against two pretty difficult pitchers in the last two games of this series. One of them in Carlos Rodon, who's a lefty who the Red Sox have struggled against in general, but more specifically, he was a lefty with a sub-3 ERA. The Red Sox have been kind of terrible against those types of pitchers, and they kind of brought it to him in this series. Marcus Stroman had a 1-5-something ERA on the road before this series started. They brought it to him as well. This is absolutely what this offense needs to look like. They took full advantage of all of their most positive tools. They were stealing bases. They were taking extra bases. They were utilizing all the speed that they had in this lineup. And one of the things 
things that I loved about this series is that you were able to showcase that. The guys that have speed were able to get on base and they were able to do something and cause damage on the base pass. And to me, that's exactly what this Red Sox team should be doing. They're one of the most athletic teams in this entire sport and they were able to showcase that in this series. I don't know if I could ask for anything more from this Red Sox offense. They battled from behind. They came up in big moments, which we've been talking about over the past couple of months, right? They've had such an issue with runners in scoring position lately that it felt like they weren't getting those big hits. They got plenty of those in this series and they took it to the best team in the AL. And it wasn't just that they beat the best team in the AL, it's that they scored 17 runs to beat the best team in the AL. That's something that they can absolutely be proud of. And you're starting to see, in my opinion, a lot of these younger players, right? We're highlighting Duran, Hamilton, Rafaela in this series really sort of gain that confidence. And you're seeing what confidence looks like with the Boston Red Sox. And it is it's a whole lot of fun. But the offense wasn't the only part of this series that we need to talk about, so let's break down the pitching as well. However, before we get into the pitching, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button as well. Not only does it help these videos out a ton, but it's the best way to let me know that you're enjoying the content we are creating. Thank you all very much for doing so. Let's talk about the pitching. Pitching-wise, there is one negative. I don't want to bring the vibes down too much, but we do need to talk about it, and that is Brian Bayo, who came out and had another really tough outing. He only made it four and two-thirds innings, allowing four earned on six hits, walking three and striking out five. He just simply can't seem to make the right adjustments here recently, and honestly... I'm not sure if he's trying to pitch through something or not, but ever since coming back from the IL, he has looked completely different and not in a good way. I am starting to get a bit nervous about Brian Bayo. Obviously, I think it's going to take some time to get those adjustments made, but what is that going to do to his confidence if he's going out there night in and night out, unable to make those adjustments, and just sort of getting shelled a little bit? That ERA is now up to a 5 even, which is the worst ERA on the Red Sox pitching staff, and the FIP isn't looking much better at 4.72. I don't know what's in store for Brian Bayo, but he really needs to sit down with Andrew Bailey and and be ready to completely change what he's doing. I think, honestly, a lot of what the problem is, is he's trying to nibble too much. He needs to start pounding the zone a bit more with strikes. He's been walking a lot of batters lately, and obviously that always comes back to bite you. Cooper Criswell was solid in this series. Wasn't fantastic, but we'll say solid. Four innings, two earned on three hits, struck out six, and walked two. The only thing that I would have liked to see more of from Criswell is just inning-wise. I'd like to see him go deeper into games, but he's been sort of this four or five inning pitcher for a while now and if he's going to give you four innings to earn and keep you in a game and win some I'm really not going to complain about it. Cutter Crawford finished this series off, and he had a quality start. Six innings, three earned is a quality start from Cutter. He only had three hits, walked one, and struck out a ridiculous nine. He has settled in a bit after that stretch of really tough games. I like that he's actually been able to make the adjustments necessary, which is a fantastic sign. I will say, though, we are going on game six in a row where he is allowed a home run, so it probably would be nice if he went a game or two here without allowing one, but if you're going to go six innings, three earned every time out and give up two bombs I'm gonna take it every day of the week starting pitching wise they were solid I don't think they were the highlight of this series though however the bullpen the bullpen had some real big highlight moments we got to shout out my guy Zach Kelly who I've been saying should be a big part of this bullpen for a little bit now he came in basically series on the line bases loaded nobody out Red Sox up by one came in struck out two and got a line drive to end the inning absolute 11 Electric factory stuff from Zach Kelly. I tweeted out that I would buy a Zach Kelly jersey if he got out of that inning. I now owe myself a Zach Kelly jersey, so that is on the way. I'll show you guys when I get it. Kenley Jansen had a big moment as well, calling Alex Cora in the dugout saying, I want this four inning save, getting put in, coming into a really critical spot in the middle game of this series, and sitting down four Yankees in a row for this win. Did not allow a hit, did not allow a walk. Absolutely fantastic killer type stuff from. Kenley Jansen. That is exactly what you want to see from your bullpen veteran leader, right? You want to see that fire. You want to see that spark. Kenley Jansen, 
brought it in this series. Overall, again, pitching starting wise wasn't really the highlight of this series, which is different from what we've talked about basically this entire year, especially when the Red Sox do well like this. But the bullpen, they had themselves a time. Overall, in terms of what this series means for the Red Sox 2024 season, this feels huge, right? This has to be the most important series of the year, right? Mostly because you had your offense show up athleticism wise in an absolutely massive way. You didn't even hit a home run in this series and you still scored 17 runs just simply based on how athletic this lineup is. Your pitching had really, really big moments in here that just absolutely fired up the fan base. And speaking of the fan base, this was the first time this season that you could really feel the energy at Fenway Park through your TV. You hadn't really gotten that over this season as a whole, regardless of what their record has been, and right, rightfully so, but there were conversations about wh whether or not it'd be 80% Yankee fans. Red Sox fans showed up and showed up in a big way in this series, and I think that's an underrated part of this Red Sox team winning these two games. Like I said in the intro, they had two options here. They could have come into this homestand against the two best teams in baseball and laid down and died and really sent their season into a spiral, or they could have showed up and hopefully made this a corner turning type stretch for this team. And that's exactly what they did. They're coming out of this series more confident than they've been this entire season with vibes higher than they've been this entire season. I've been saying this from day one. This team is more talented than a lot of people have given them credit for. This is exactly why. What they were able to do in this series should give you a ton of confidence in who this Red Sox team could be. They are getting healthier. They're getting closer to what they should look like on paper, and it is absolutely fantastic. Now, obviously, this is one stretch in June. They have a lot of work left to do. What they need to do now, take this stretch, take this momentum, and roll it into a legitimate turning point for this season. They need to go into Toronto, continue to do what they are doing, really sort of bury the Blue Jays behind them in the standings, and start to really become the team that I and a lot of you guys have expected this team to be this entire year. What this series was overall was a ton of fun, and I do think it meant a lot to the guys on this team. They came in and they were not favored at all. They were expected to drop most of these games. And they completely turned that narrative on its head. We talk about it all the time. This is an inexperienced baseball team that confidence means a lot for. Being confident in themselves, being confident in their ability is going to be a major factor in whether or not this team succeeds. And I don't know what gives a team more confidence than beating the two best teams in your home ballpark one of them being your biggest hated rival and with Alex Verdugo stomping around the bases and really shutting him down as well that had to do something for this team's confidence and like we mentioned in the Philly series that is absolutely massive to this team's success I don't think we could have asked for a better series here from the Boston Red Sox <laughs> I, I'm coming out of this series saying, yeah, this team could make a playoff run. And I don't know if that's crazy or not to say, because two series ago, I was saying it's very unlikely. This team feels completely different over the course of one week. And if you're a Red Sox fan, you should be absolutely pumped up with what the Red Sox did in this one. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. After beating the Phillies, after beating the Yankees, how are you feeling about the Boston Red Sox? What do you think the rest of the season's going to look like? And what are your overall thoughts on the 2024 team? Let me know all your thoughts on this latest series in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, like I said, we talk socks almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button as well. It just helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way to let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Don't forget, you can also get these episodes always on Spotify or in podcast form. Links are in the description, or you can head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Seat Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you all very happily in the Red Seats.